Hi everybody, it's Karen Bentley here and I am an author, an adult educator, and an influencer here on YouTube. And welcome to my channel where we revolutionize, redefine, and uplift recovery and we do it together. Today I'm going to be reviewing this book for you, Addiction and Grace by Gerald G. May. And I'm very excited to share the contents with you because even though this book was published 36 years ago in 1988, it's still kicking ass on Amazon. Let me read these statistics to you so you can see how popular it is. It's number 85 in drug dependency and recovery books on Amazon. It's number 172 in substance abuse recovery books on Amazon. It's number 767 in Christian inspirational books on Amazon. So it's very popular. On top of that, it's got a 4.5 average book rating out of five uh, based on 723 reviews. Uh, I was surprised to see my own review in there when I was uh, scanning them. And uh, 20 years ago, I rated this book a three. And I would say uh, I would still give it the same rating today. There's a quote from a best-selling author, M. Scott Peck. He was a very famous, very potent a psychiatrist in the 1980s and 90s, and he says, an exquisitely crafted contribution to human understanding, a very good book, in his quote. And then the subtitle is, Love and Spirituality in the Healing of Addictions. Um, I have to say that the title of this book, Addiction and Grace, the combination of those two words speaks to me. It's very powerful. Um, it recalls to my mind the song Amazing Grace, which we're all familiar with, and in particular the phrase, to save a wretch like me. And I think, oh, there's something about grace and my, addic my addictions that's going to save a wretch like me. And that really, you know, pulled me in, hooked me, got me to buy this book, and it would probably get me to buy this book again. Just the power of the title alone. Gerald G. May is no longer on the planet with us. He lived from, let's see, 1940 to 2005. He died relatively young at the age of 65. Um, he was a psychiatrist in a prison system and a Christian leader. Um, the book can be purchased for about $11 on Amazon. You can get your own paperback. There are also used copies available for anywhere from two to $9. Um, I'm sure you can find it in a Goodwill store or in any reseller. It's been a very popular long living book. So um, it's not going to be hard to get a copy. Maybe one of your friends has a copy hanging around. Um, let's start with May's definition of addiction, which is this. To define it directly, addiction is a state of compulsion, obsession, or preoccupation that enslaves a person's will and desire. Addiction sidetracks and eclipses the energy of our deepest, truest desire for love and goodness. And I have no objection whatsoever to his definition of addiction. That works for me. Uh, the book is organized into four distinct categories, mind, uh, body, spirit, and grace. Uh, mind is um, the psychology of addiction. Uh, obviously, being a psychiatrist uh, may know something about this. He reminds us that the uh, earliest uh, reasons for addiction were based on repression but that a more updated reasoning uh, divides addictions into two categories, either aversion or attraction addiction. And he has tables that list all the different addictions into these categories. Um, he also talks about how addictions are learned, how they're habituated, how we struggle with them. You know, if you find that helpful, you'll enjoy this chapter. I Personally, didn't get much out of it, but you might. It was only mildly interesting to me. Uh, one thing that I really did like, though, was uh, May's point that there's no such thing as an addictive personality. He thinks that that's a myth, that that is more harmful than helpful, that you develop those personality traits after you get the addiction, not before you have them, that the addiction causes the personality disorder rather than the disorder causing the addiction. So I, I actually did like that. 
Um, the second section is the neurology of addiction, which um, he uh, refers to the brain, your brain functionality as your body. He doesn't distinguish between those two things. He has uh, a lot of explanations about neurons and cells and synapses and neurotransmitters and neuroreceptors. Um, I found this to be the most outdated chapter in the book. Uh, May, for example, does not talk at all about how our brain functionality can be altered through a diet, through exercise, through meditation, and through medication. There are many pharmaceuticals that uh, now can help out. So, um, you know, in, in my opinion, that section can be completely gross, glossed over unless you have a particular interest in it. Uh, the third section is the theology of addiction, and uh, he refers to this as spirit, but um, he's really referring to Christian theology and doctrine. And in his opinion, all addictions are uh, a displacement or a booby prize for our love for God, that we are, are using false gods to substitute uh, for our real deepest love, which is the love of God. Um, he says there are, are three options that we have. If, if we have an addiction, we can deny or avoid the call to God, which most of us do. Uh, the second thing is can, we can make images of spiritual reality. I have absolutely no idea what May is talking about. He does not define that statement, uh, but uh, it obviously means something to him, but nothing to me. And then we can cooperate the, with the mystery of addiction and just embrace it and say, you know, that this is either a trial or test from God or, as Gay suggests, perhaps it's really a gift. And maybe, maybe it really is a gift. Um, the fourth section is about grace. And this is my personal favorite section. It's a reason to buy the book. His section on grace is really quite nice. Um, Grace, he believes, is the expression of God's love to us. It comes through God to us. Um, and he says that it is a surprising us with undeserved, unexpected goodnesses and empowering us when all seems lost. That's how he defines grace. Um, he also references the song Amazing Grace. Tis grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. And in fact, he believes that the return to grace is a homecoming. That's how he refers to it. Um, he says that grace is not earned. There's nothing we can do to accomplish it or achieve it. It's simply given. It's given because of the love of God. We can pray for grace, but we have to be mindful about not begging for it, not manipulating for it, not bargaining for it, not trying to buy it. Um, and that for us to be the recipients of God's grace, we should put ourselves in the divine will of God. And by that, he means by acting in a loving and, um, dedicated way to, to God. And then if we do this, we will be delivered from our addiction. And he defines deliverance as a sudden empowerment that makes a person able to make a change in his or her behavior when there is no physical, psychological, or social explanation. Um, he says, I believe that grace is an empowerment that's present in all true healings. Um, so he, he, um, he really thinks that, you know, if you, if you appeal to God, if you align yourself with God, you will be the recipient of grace. And that is actually your own healing. Um, in my opinion, the best part about this book is the title and the linkage of Addiction and Grace. I really still like that. I have always liked it. I still like it. It's the best part of the book, in my opinion. Um, I personally have an affinity for God stuff. I'm open to it. If you're not, this is not the book for you. And as I mentioned before, it's based on Christian theology. If you don't have a tolerance for quotes from the scripture or, or um, Christian beliefs, such as the idea that um, God banished Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden 
um, as a form of protection rather than uh, punishment. You know, yeah, you, you have to have a tolerance for that kind of stuff or you won't like this book. Also, the other thing you need to know is that this is not a how-to book. If you're looking for uh, steps to follow, a quick fix, um, you're not going to find it here. So you really need to read May's idea and digest them, uh, especially the ones on Grace. Um, the thing I most disliked about this book, other than it being outdated in sections and not being interesting to me in sections, the thing I most disliked about this book was that the author does not walk his talk. Um, so for example, these are direct quotes from the book. I live a life infused by the bondage of addiction and the hope of grace. I have by no means achieved victory over my own addictions. Of course, uh, uh, May later defines his addictions as minor ones to uh, nicotine and caffeine and food and things like that. But he recall that he died a relatively young age at 65. Who knows uh, what role those addictions played in his early uh, exit from the planet. Uh, also, he also says this, something in me is suspicious of purity and perfection. I have known a few people who thought they were pure and perfect, and I did not like them very much. So on the one hand, he's saying, you know, we have to uh, align ourselves with God's divine will to be a loving and, and a pure being. And on the second hand, oh, but I don't like those kinds of people. So I, I, it's a little bit of a mixed message for me. And I prefer... Uh, my, my, my favorite author, my favorite coach, my favorite learning experience is from people who've actually learned by doing. And um, May isn't one of them. So if you're not bothered by that, you'll like it. Um, let's see. So that's my take on the book. Again, I would, I would give it a, a solid three, one thumb up, one thumb down. Um, uh, but, you know, it, it might work for you. And if it does, check it out. Tell me what you think. Write your comments below. I can't wait to hear from you. I can't wait to read your stuff and uh, make friends. And bye for now.